Now, this, this is weird, right? Think back to the unit circle, because that was where we also said that we dealt with, um, it's, we, we also dealt with parameters in this context. When you have the unit circle, we said, okay, any point uh, can be stated as cos theta, sorry, every, any point on the circumference, I should say, can be stated as cos theta sine theta. And so we said, look, this theta what they're talking about starts with a positive x-axis, and it goes up to the radius that connects to your point on the circumference. Okay, so that's, that's the theta, that's cos theta sine theta. Now, the, why did we choose theta um, as the, because you, you don't have to choose theta, you can choose other things. Why did we choose theta as the parameter? And the answer is, in this case, if I give you theta, like say uh, 190 degrees, 190 degrees, Somewhere like that. I don't know, that's too far. Um, if I give you 190 degrees, then you know conclusively where you are on the unit circle. In other words, it's unique, right? 190 degrees can't be anywhere else on the unit circle. It gives you this spot and only this spot, okay? Now, if I said to you on the other hand, okay, let's use uh, the gradient of the spot on the circle. Uh, let's use the gradient as the parameter for the circle. You quickly run into a problem. For instance, Suppose I said, hey, the spot that I'm interested in, the spot on the unit circle that I'm, I want to be at is uh, gradient one. It has a gradient of one, okay? Well, you run into a problem because like, where is that point? Uh, I can find at least one, here's one. See that guy there? If I drew the tangent, you can see um, that would be parallel to y equals x, so it would have a gradient of one. But that is not the only spot. Can you see where the other spot would be, right? Uh, it's going to be on the directly opposite side, like, like this. Uh, if I, oof, there we go, my circle's not very good, but you, you get the idea. Use your imagination. Uh, you can see here that this is, is the, both tangents are going to be parallel. Both of them have a gradient of one. So the gradient doesn't work to be the parameter for the unit circle. That's why we choose the angle, because it's unique, whereas the gradient is not. But here, what this is saying is the gradient... That's what this, uh, this thing over here is. Is the parameter for a parabola. That's confusing. Um, the gradient is the parameter on a parabola. So the reason why this works, and maybe if you start to like, think about what a parabola looks like, draw one with me. If you think about what a parabola looks like, you can see why this actually makes sense. If I go back to my uh, uh, gradient equals one thing, if this is x squared equals 4ay, where would there be a gradient of 1? Well, I don't know, just trying to use a similar scale here. Uh, something like that, right? There you go. There's a spot which has a gradient of 1. So t would be 1 in that case. What happens when you look to the right of this point? What happens to the gradient? And the answer is because it's getting steeper and steeper, the gradient is getting bigger and bigger forever, it never returns to 1. Yeah. Um, likewise, when you come to the left, go in the opposite direction, the gradient gets smaller and smaller, and then it just goes, it goes negative, right? Um, the gradient is unique. When you find a spot on the parabola, there's only one spot that shares the same gradient, unlike, say, with a circle, okay? So this is special about parabolas. Um, if, for example, you think about a cubic curve, just go up one power, uh, you will find that the gradient is also do doesn't make sense because here's, here's a cubic, right? If I say gradient one one more time, okay, you're like, look, I can find a spot over here and I can also find a spot over here, right? Uh, and no matter what cubic you've got, you'll find repeat spots where you, they've got identical gradients. Uh, that should make sense if you think about it because, for instance, like this is... Uh, this could be y equals x cubed. When you differentiate this to find the gradient, the derivative, what kind of function is the derivative? The derivative is going to be a quadratic. So when you're solving for when this derivative is equal to a certain thing, like say when it is equal to 1, then of course you're going to find two solutions. Excuse me. Because <laughs> you always get... <coughs> excuse me. You always get two solutions out of this kind of quadratic, right? I mean, presuming there is a solution at all. Whereas the derivative of a parabola is a linear function, right? Uh, the derivative here 
if y equals x squared on 4a, and this is another way we can see it, if you go dy on dx, right, dy on dx, you can see that you're going to get uh, 2x on 4a, which is x on 2a, right, x on 2a, but look, x on 2a, x on 2a, you divide both sides by 2a, you just get t, right, so that's just another way of seeing it without the chain rule. So, because you're getting this linear function, a linear function, uh, you put one value in, you get one value out, and it never repeats itself, unlike the parabola does, okay? So, this is what the parameter means. The parameter at any given point, like what is t? It's the derivative at that point, at that location on the parabola. This is going to become really important later on when we try and understand, well, I want a, um, like when you're visualizing, oh, okay, there's a spot on this parabola and its parameter is uh, negative two. Uh, well, where is that? And the answer is, you don't, have to, you don't have to put these values in first to get intuition for where it is. You just say, well, where on here is the gradient negative two? Well, it's going to be somewhere on this side, right? Because it's negative and um, it's going to be a steep one. So somewhere further up the curve, okay? So that's why we choose this as the parameter for the parabola.